Your Excellency President Miguel Diaz Canel Bermudez, Excellencies, Cuba for many decades has a champion for the concerns and aspirations of developing nations within various multilateral fora. Before I continue with my speech, I would like to join others in expressing our condolences to the Kingdom of Morocco and the Republic of Libya. This year, Cuba assumes the presidency of the G77 at a crucial time when the global south is impacted by multiple and interlocking challenges related to the pandemics, climate change, food, fertilizer, and energy crises, which paves the way for the setbacks to the SDGs and a deepening of the global debt crisis. In the 15th century, Asia was the most technologically developed region. Europe had advanced only in a few sectors, including gunpowder, cannon, and ocean-going ships. These three technologies helped Europe to conquer the rest of the world. The conquest of Asia and Africa set back the development of science and technology in our countries, creating the technological divide of today. Another quantum leap in technology and innovation is taking place in the 21st century at a geometrical progression, further widening the existing technological divide, leading to the marginalization of the South. There are two key factors essential for the developing nations to come out of this crisis. The first is digitalization and the adoption of new technologies such as big data, internet of things, AI, blockchain, biotechnology, and genome sequencing. The second is ensuring human resources skilled in the multifaceted fields of science and technology. An educated manpower, well-equipped with knowledge and technological know-how is necessary to keep the smooth flow of the needed transformation. These two factors single-handedly will lubricate the development and catching off process in the developing nations. Let me outline the measures my government is taking. A continuing economic restructuring process after the financial crisis of 2022 provides us with a chance to harness the potential of science, technology and innovation to our future trajectory of sustainable development and high growth. We are currently evaluating the performance of all our existing science and technology research institutes, some of which are underperforming. To promote the utilization of new technologies for Sri Lanka's growth, the government will establish a technology and innovation council as well as a digital transformation agency. Our universities currently do not have the capacity to create the requisite number of technology specialists. Therefore, we will establish four new universities focusing on the new technologies. One of these is the outcome of the technological cooperation between India and Sri Lanka. The International Climate Change University will be the fifth. The digital divide presents significant challenges to the development in the global south. These include limited access to costly technology, inadequate digital skills and infrastructure, cultural and in institutional barriers, and financing constraints. Global trade barriers further compound these issues. To overcome these challenges, the G77 and China must establish an effective mechanism for cooperation. Otherwise, our endeavors will be limited to words. We must immediately reinvigorate the Consortium of Science and Technology and Innovation for the South, the COSTIF. This will be a test of our commitment. In addition, a revised program of action with many other proposed new measures is required. These measures should include collectively creating technological platforms modeled on the European Union's technology and innovation platforms in the following fields. Digitalization, health, medication, AI, and renewable energy 
including green hydrogen. Two, interested G77 countries must make a commitment to earmark 1% of their GD for R&D. This has to be achieved over a decade. And three, we must foster collaboration between governments and the private sector. The brain drain from south to the north and the resulting loss of educated manpower is another threat to the development of science, technology and innovation of the south. China, India, Japan and South Korea have developed science, technology and innovation by nurturing their own manpower. Therefore, we must ask for compensation from the North for the loss of our manpower. Strengthening South-South cooperation can also play a significant role in addressing the critical issues of expanding our human resources. Sri Lanka urges the group of 77 and China to work together to introduce a scheme similar to the Colombo plan to increase collaboration, exchange best practices and push policies that harness the transformational potential of science, technology and innovation amongst us. Sri Lanka is committed to supporting the new Havana Declaration. We must ensure that the collective voice of G77 and China is heard in the international fora. In conclusion, let me once again thank President Miguel Dez Canel Bermudez and the government of Cuba for your generous hospitality and excellent arrangement. Thank you.